Welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. A few weeks ago, we made a video talking about why Doctor Strange is such a beautiful and underrated film. I mean, I really love this movie. But the funny thing is that Doctor Strange is basically the same as Green Lantern. I know, right? Uh, okay. And I'm not joking here, because after we go over all these similarities, you're gonna be surprised just how similar these two movies are. Though, you know, of course, one is extremely good and underrated, while the other one has a villain with a nutsack on their head. Holy God, what are you Dippies showing me? His head. Come on! Looking at these movies side by side gives us a fascinating study about how the execution of storytelling is so crucial, and the key difference that shows why one movie is this. Who are you in this vast multiverse? The other one is this. What's wrong with your face? Most folks just don't seem to have a taste for testicles no more. Testicles? Yes, ma'am. Sheep balls. Both movies tell the story of a guy who's the best at what he does, but his arrogance and fear hold him back from being truly great. This makes the hero into a reckless a-hole, who's also a terrible driver. The love interest is the hero's ex, but it's complicated since they work together. But she's the only person in his life that sees his true potential. Life without my work. It's still life. This isn't the end. There are other things that can give your life meaning. It isn't one way or the other. That's the way a child looks at things, and we aren't children anymore. After a bad accident, the hero loses his job, which represents his loss of purpose. For Strange, it's his hands, and for Hal, it's his ability to fly. At a low point, the hero meets this guy who tells him about an ancient order that protects the universe. And we sorcerers protect the sanctums. From what? Other dimensional beings that threaten our universe. Since time immemorial, the Green Lantern Corps has served as the keepers of peace, order, and justice throughout the universe. The hero travels far away and joins the Ancient Order, though at first he is met with some hostility from some of the other members. The hero is given a ring, and there's this green glowing thingy that allows the hero to create constructs with his mind. We harness energy to conjure shields and weapons. Your will turns thought into reality. At first, the hero has problems using his new powers because the energy is dependent on willpower, and the hero has some major low confidence problems that he has to resolve. But once the hero overcomes this hurdle, he masters his new power very quickly. Now, the bad guy of both movies used to be a member of the Ancient Order, but after using the forbidden energy, he was corrupted and turned evil. And it turns out that the bad guy is just a tool for the real villain, who's this powerful space entity that consumes worlds. The secondary villain draws the energy from the evil entity, which turns his forehead into a giant nutsack. Wait, sorry, that's, that's only in Green Lantern. I'm gonna blow that nutsack right off your face. The Ancient Order is led by this ancient bald leader who's really powerful. Also, it's revealed that the ancient leader uses the same energy as the evil entity. She does draw power from the dark dimension and the power of the enemy will be ours. Now, at a certain point in the movie, the villain mortally injures the bald member, but they only die after giving the hero a pep talk. There's points in both movies where the heroes want to quit, leave the order behind, and return to their lives. I'm out. I came here to heal my hands, not to fight in some mystical war. I'm done. He's right. I'm only human. There's also this frenemy character who is completely devoted to the order, but he clearly has a dark side. When the frenemy discovers that the ancient leader used all the forbidden energy, all his beliefs in the order shatter, and he starts his path to the dark side. Also, there's a point later in the movie where the hero has to convince the frenemy to help him save the world. I cannot defeat them alone. I need your help. You gotta help me save my world. Another member of the order is this guy who acts all tough and is hostile toward the hero at first, but turns out he's all talk. In the end, he becomes besties with the hero. Now, at some point, the hero reveals his new powers to his love interest, which freaks her out at first. Save it. Oh my god, how? But later, she ends up saving the hero's life from the bad guy. Now, there's a scene where a female character gives the hero a pep talk about how fear is his greatest obstacle. Arrogance and fear still keep you from learning the simplest and most significant lesson of all. The ring didn't see that you were fearless. It saw that you had the ability to overcome fear. It saw that you're courageous. Despite the Ancient Order having many members, most of them get wiped out pretty easily. So it's up to the hero to save the day all on his own. While the hero fights the bad guy at first, the evil entity is the one that kills the secondary villain. When the hero fights the evil entity, he understands that he's no match for it. So instead, he uses his brains and outsmarts the entity to save the world. This is time. Endless, looped time. <laughs> Oh, 
see, the way it works is you have to be chosen. Also, the hero uses this green glowing thingy to trick the villain. The hero is willing to sacrifice his life to save the world, showing his growth as a person. In the end, the hero takes his place in the ancient order, finding a new purpose. Both movies end with a credit scene where the frenemy is established as the villain for the next movie. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. So yeah, I mean, the similarities are insane. I mean, these two movies are basically the same, only one is clearly superior. Now, if I believed in conspiracy theories, I could have said that Marvel copied the whole movie just to make a much better version to show Warner Brothers how it's done. Now, all these similarities create an interesting case study about the execution of storytelling, because Doctor Strange literally does everything better than Green Lantern. And look, it's been over a decade. We all know that Green Lantern wasn't a good movie. Honestly, at this point, it sort of feels mean to make fun of it. And please don't make the super suit green. Or animated. So, it's going to be pretty easy to go over all the bad things in Green Lantern and show how Doctor Strange does it better. The story, the characters, the visuals, and the action, and pretty much everything else are better in Doctor Strange. But instead, let's focus on the main theme of these movies. Doctor Strange and the Green Lantern explore the hero's struggles with fear. It's fear that holds them back, prevents them from growing as people. Their arcs are not just about overcoming fear, they're about accepting that they are afraid. Because you're afraid to even admit you're afraid. I know. I spent my entire life doing it. To avoid dealing with fear, they both created walls around them, using arrogance, recklessness, and selfishness as shields. Hi, Paul. Did you just use your wingman as a decoy? <laughs> you know, you didn't have to humiliate him in front of everyone. I didn't have to save his patient either, but you know, I sometimes just can't help myself. Steven's biggest flaws are his fear of failure and losing control. This is why he refuses to treat patients that he considers to be lost causes. He claims that he doesn't want to ruin his perfect record, but in truth, it's all about not failing and staying in control. You want to go back to the delusion that you can control anything. He convinced himself that as long as he's in control, he can't fail. And that's the core of his arc in the movie, letting go of his unhealthy need for control. Only then is he able to face his fear of failure and grow as a person, which helps him find his new purpose. It's a fully earned arc. For example, there's this sequence where Strange is learning how to use the mystic arts. For him to perform magic, he needs to overcome his obsession with control. He's so afraid of failing that he can't open his mind to magic. And that's despite the fact that the only reason he wants to learn magic is to fix his hands. You cannot beat a river into submission. You have to surrender to its current and use its power as your own. Well, I, I control it by surrendering control? That doesn't make any sense. So it's only when Strange is forced to give up his unhealthy control that he's able to finally understand his flaws and begin his change. Again, we did cover all of that extensively in this video. Check that out when you have a chance. It's really good. Scott Derrickson shared it on Twitter. It's a big moment for me. Good job! Now, Hal's fear is a bit less defined. On one hand, Hal's afraid of being afraid, seeing he sees it as a weakness, as if it's proof that he's a coward. You're not scared, are you, Dad? Let's just say it's my job not to be. It's derived from the trauma of his youth when he witnessed his father's death in a plane crash. This fear holds him back as a pilot, like when he has an anxiety attack while flying. Hal is also afraid of commitment. This is why he keeps quitting whenever things get too serious or too hard. I'm done. How do, how do you walk away from something like that? Is this? Even possible? Oh, I think we both know I'm pretty good at walking away. Now I have to give it to Green Lantern. The movie found some clever ways to weave the concept of fear into its story. The Lantern Corps draw their energy from the power of will, the opposite aspect of fear. And Parallax is the physical manifestation of fear since he is an entity that feeds on fear. How about that? Green Lantern has more depth than we all thought. Problem is that the execution of the storytelling in Green Lantern is done so poorly. How struggle and much of the movie's themes with fear end up being too heavy handed and poorly written. We have too many scenes of characters talking about fear and how they're afraid of fear. You are afraid. Are you afraid? Fear is what stops you and makes you weak. You reek of fear. Because I'm afraid. But most of the time, it feels too hollow and by the numbers. And it's mostly because the script is all over the place, which makes the characters and the story feel inconsistent. Now, Doctor Strange has to overcome his mental barriers before he can even use magic. But in Green Lantern, the movie doesn't really know how to deal with Hal's mental barriers. Because at times, he can use the power ring with no difficulty, but other times, it's suddenly an issue. It's like the screenplay remember that it was supposed to be dealing with fear and its effects on the power of will. So there's never a real sense that Hal actually overcomes his mental barriers because the movie doesn't know how to truly deal with any of them. And it becomes apparent every time the movie attempts to dive deeper into its more complicated themes. 
And this is really not a surprise. As Ryan Reynolds has said multiple times, the movie went into filming before it even had a finished script. You know, we get a poster, we get a release date, we got an actor, but we don't have a script, but we're just gonna start shooting anyway. And that's always tough. It's very hard to dig your way out of that. Both Steven and Hal want to revert back, undo all of their progress, because they once again allow fear to control them. Now, Doctor Strange tackles this in a perfect scene, the one where the Ancient One forces Steven to confront his flaws. It's one of my favorite moments in Doctor Strange. We don't get to choose our time. Death is what gives life meaning. To know your days are numbered, your time is short. This incredible scene has so much depth about humanity's relationship with time and purpose, as we're in a constant race to find one while desperately trying to escape the clutches of the other. Stephen's arc is summed up in this perfect line. Arrogance and fear still keep you from learning the simplest and most significant lesson of all. Which is? It's not about you. The Ancient One helps Strange to see his flaws. He finally understands how to overcome his selfishness and overcome his fear of losing control. He can understand his true purpose, to serve something greater than himself and to save the world. And it's done just so masterfully. But look at me, stretching one moment out into a thousand, just so that I can watch the snow. Now, Green Lantern has a similar scene where Hal gets a pep talk from Carol. The crucial turning point for Hal here is that he admits that he's afraid. Please explain to me just once why. Because I'm afraid. Bringing up his self-doubts and fear of commitment again as he feels unworthy of the rank. Like the Ancient One helping Steven, Carol is the one that helps Hal finally accept his fear and understand how to deal with it. Green didn't see that you were fearless. It saw that you had the ability to overcome fear. It saw that you're courageous. And while a little too heavy-handed, the scene itself is solid and it works. But Hal's understanding doesn't feel as impactful as it should have been. We don't get a real sense that he grew as a person. And that brings us to the culmination of both movies, where we see how much the hero has changed and all the lessons that he's learned. I will say that the conversation between Hal and Hector Hammond had some potential, especially thanks to a moment like this. Do not live up to expectations to feel like nothing that you do will ever be good enough. I know what it's like to be afraid. But really, it's so hard to take seriously because of how terrible a villain Hammond is. You can't admit that it looks exactly like testicles. But then it all becomes just a mess when Parallax arrives. Just a dumb, ugly CGI battle that amounts to nothing. The themes of fear are quickly forgotten again, and it's, it's just really, really bad, guys. It's just bad. Doctor Strange's climax, on the other hand, it feels like a true culmination of Steven's arc. Dormammu. I've come to bargain. When Strange faces Dormammu, he understands that he can beat the entity. He outsmarts Dormammu with the Time Stone. But the key here is that Steven finally gives up on control. He gives up being selfish. He's willing to die millions of times to give Earth more time. Then you will spend eternity dying. But everyone on Earth will live. But you will suffer. Pain's an old friend. He does the truly selfless act, ready to sacrifice himself to save the world. The whole movie is built to Steven's decision in the end, so it all feels powerful and earned. Hal is also willing to sacrifice himself as he tricks Parallax. But again, the poor writing and execution prevent that moment from feeling like it has an impact. Green Lantern just ends up stumbling all over the place. And it's a shame. Green Lantern could have been so much better. I know, right? The source material is so rich with lore and great stories. This could have been Star Wars with superheroes. The dynamic between Hal and Sinestro is basically Anakin and Obi-Wan, only in reverse, where the master is the one who turns to the dark side. Instead, the movie doesn't even bother spending any time on building up the relationship between these two. Unlike Doctor Strange, which puts the focus on the complicated relationship between Steven and Mordo. Hal is grounded to Earth, doing boring Earth stuff when he's supposed to be in space, doing cool space stuff. The movie gives us a horrible villain who has a nutsack for a forehead, and that's the only interesting thing about him. And even worse, Parallax is a big space cloud, which is really the worst lesson you could take from the Fantastic Four 2. I am very disappointed! Green Lantern had a lot of things going for it, and with a better script and better direction, the movie could have been so much better. Whether or not it was intended, Doctor Strange learns from all of Green Lantern's mistakes, and it uses the same story ideas to make a far superior film. But look, that's just how I feel. Let me know what you think about these two movies down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.